top of the morning to everybody. All right, in this little tutorial, I want to talk about the uh, stabilization controls. I know I did something a little bit before about stabilization controls and talked about the differences that they have now, but um, I want to kind of run through them and give you a, a good example of what they look like. Okay, first I'm going to show you this clip, and I want you to know that I didn't have any stabilization controls on this clip, so my camera work is kind of shaky, and I picked this particular part because I feel it can kind of give us a good example of what what good quality work the stabilization controls will do for these types of clips. So here's how it goes. He's going to transition from this blue car over to that white car that you see in the left. And when he does, he will, um, as I move, basically, I'm, I'm kind of shaky. I'm walking backwards and trying to keep an eye on where I'm going as well as what I'm shooting. So it's a little difficult. So here you go. Financiamiento. Otro ejemplo, tenemos otro 2013, ese es el modelo LE, el automático, con aire acondicionado, vidrios eléctricos, puertas eléctricas. Now you can see my steps. Otro ejemplo, tenemos otro as 2013. I, as I step, you can see how I'm bouncing, LE, you can see the camera kind of bouncing up and down. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the stabilization controls on. And right away you notice everything get closer, okay? Now let's see what they look like. This is just the standard. Actually, when they go on, they default to this. This is the standard default stabilization control. So let's take a look. Otro ejemplo. Tenemos otro 2013. The bouncing is now este gone. Es el modelo LE, el automático, con aire acondicionado, vidrios eléctricos, puertas eléctricas. And you don't see that jerk that I had right at there at the end. Otro ejemplo. Tenemos okay, otro now this 2013. is pretty good. Um, este es this one's pretty good, and for default, it's, it's fairly good. But a lot of times on my clips, let's see if I can find one. I sometimes, let's, let's grab this one here and throw it down here real quick. Sometimes in my transitions, like this one, for example, I'm a little close. Let's, let's cut this out, move it over, and... Let's just do the transition part till I stop moving. There we go. Okay, this is no stable. Well, let's adjust this audio too because it's kind of loud. Okay, this is without any stabilization controls. You can see I'm rotating and I'm bouncing. And this one's pretty tough because there's actually obstacles in my way as I'm trying to do this. There's a not a light pole but a telephone pole that I had to move around behind me while I'm trying to do this so it's kind of tough and you can see you can see my rotation you can see everything angling rotating left and right so let's turn the automatic stabilization control on and I want to show you what happens it looks clean, but I'm cutting his head off. Right there at the top of his head, I cut it off. And I try to avoid that as much as possible. So what I normally do is I change my stabilization controls. Instead of automatic, I usually go to smooth cam. And instead of 1.5, I'll take these down to just 0.5. It always purrs when I do that. Every single time. Don't know why. Okay. And you notice everything zoomed out a little bit as I did that. Let's do the same to this. Let's go right where his head's cut off. Right there. Now this one, for some reason, when it said method automatic, it gave us these three options. That's because instead of inertia cam, it picked smooth cam. Why, I don't know. But we'll do 0.5. I'm not cutting his head off anymore. Now, it'll still kind of cut off on a smaller screen, but it should be okay now. Now, let's take a look at both clips. The bouncing is still gone, so 0 0.5 is enough. And the jerk on the end is gone. Okay, let's try this one. You can still see some of the rotation. But it's forgivable. It's not going to make anyone seasick. So you've got 
both of those, and this is this is usually the default that I choose because I oftentimes catch myself shooting a little too close and I might cut their head off a little bit. Um, so I choose this as a good mix between what I want to see and what um, what I'm doing to cover my mistakes on those. But let's see the difference between inertia cam and smooth cam on this. No Just this clip. Precio especial. Ven y manejalo. Te va a gustar. Otro ejemplo. Toyota Tacoma. Esto es una 2011. Did you see that word, weird kind of inward outward movement and then the tearing right here? Let's just watch that again. Right about here, there's a weird in out movement. See that? It kind of goes in, in, and then out, out. And then there's kind of a weird tearing, bending movement right here along the wheel. Let's watch that one more time. And you'll see. It. Here it comes. In, in, and then tearing. And it kind of bends this wheel. It's a little weird. It's just right here. You can see the wheel bending out right as I do that. See that? Kind of makes it wonky. Okay? So that's what inertia cam can do. Now, inertia cam over here... Be oh, I'm not going to match any colors... Because of the direction I'm moving, inertia cam actually looks pretty good here. Financiamiento. Otro ejemplo. Tenemos otro 2013. Ese es el modelo LE, el automático con aire acondicionado, vidrios eléctricos, puertas eléctricas. It doesn't look too bad. You don't see any wonky tearing or or weird sudden movements. Um, but here it, it has to be smooth cam because of the direction I'm moving. When you move forward with inertia cam and sideways at the same time, it can kind of mess it up. So smooth cam looks a lot smoother here. Looks more like I'm really using a glide cam. Okay, now what do these, these options do? What do the numbers do? Well, they smooth out based on, I think the highest you can go is 20. No, it, it goes a little higher than that. Let's see. The slider takes you to 4.5, but you can go as high as you want, it seems. And what translation is, is the left-right movement. So as I turn the translation up, you'll see the smoothness on the left-right movement change. Otro ejemplo, Toyota Tacoma. Esto es una 2011 certificada 4x4. And 1.5 actually is a pretty decent translation number. Also is 0.5. Otro ejemplo, Toyota Tacoma. Esto es una 2011. Okay. Rotation fixes the left and right rotation um, on the Z axis. So it's the spinning of it as I'm rocking like a boat. If I go to 1.5 here, let's take this back to, let's take this to zero, both of these to zero. And you can see it, it'll flatten my, my boat rocking out quite a bit. See how it's now as if I'm holding the camera straight up and down? Whereas if I turn that off, now watch, it rocks like a boat, left, right, left, right. Okay, so that's what the rotation does. Let's turn that off. Let's go over the scale one more time. I mean, not the scale, the translation one more time. And you can see the smoothness on this. It still has the rocking motion, the in-out motion. But the left-right movement was really nice. Translation means left-right and up and down, too, by the way. Okay, let's turn that one off and let's go scale smooth. This is your in-out visibly forward and backwards. Precio especial. Ven y manejalo. Te va a gustar. Otro ejemplo. Toyota Tacoma. Esto es una 2011 certificada 4x4. Cuatro puertas. All right. Well, let's just put 1.5 on each of these. And we can see how smooth it is. 
Remember, 1.5 last time cut off his head. But look how smooth that is. It looks like I'm using a glide cam. It's pretty good. Now, the better you can do in the beginning, the lower numbers you can get and the less zoomed in your picture will be. As you can see, as I adjust each of these numbers, it zooms out. How this works is it zooms the picture in. So instead of seeing this, let's go 25. If I were to go 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, my visible picture, even though my visible picture is here, my actual picture is probably more like this. Okay? If I were to be able to fit it into the window, you would see this would extend out beyond the window this much. And what happens is it picks points, the Toyota logo, the certified thing, this here and there. It picks points that have high contrast. And it tries to keep those points in the same spot on the, on the frame as much as possible. And it moves the rest of the picture around. So as I bounce here, this whole frame is going to bounce like this and move up and down. And that's what it does to keep it stabilized. So you're getting a little bit less quality than, than um, what you shot with in, in the beginning. And that's why I like to go with the lower numbers as well. Because the lower number you get, the better quality you will get. You can see it's a little bit sharper. So if I zoom in to 100%, this is my current quality. If I were to turn stabilization off, you can see it's a little sharper. Turn it back on. Let's go to the default. And you can see it's even blurrier. So you can see a definite quality loss when you turn the stabilization on. Now some people might have to go even further. And it would make sense that you would lose more quality because you're zooming it in more. It's like a digital zoom, if you will. Okay, so the lower you can keep this number while still maintaining a decent looking quality or a decent looking smoothness, um, the better your quality will be. It's very important to know that. All right, so that was a quick run through of the stabilization controls and, and how they can help you. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching.